Page 13, Tarantella. Tarantella is like a, it's a type of music, a type of dance, if you will, taken from a spider, a tarantula, where they think the spiders kind of crawl around real quick. Tarantellas usually have a lot of quick notes in them, and they're usually in 6-8 time. Okay. Maybe they're always in 6-8 time. I don't know. You can look it up. Just Google Tarantella and read all about it. They have a preliminary study at the top. You want to do that, you go right ahead. I don't do preliminary studies. I'm not interested in it. Let's talk about the piece. I look it over. It's about, what, a page long, more or less. Clef signs are treble and bass clef. No sharps or flats in the key signature. So it's either in the key of C major or A minor. Those are the two keys with no sharps or flats. So we have to look deeper. A lot of times we look at the end, and because most pieces, not all, most pieces will end on the one chord, or the, the, the chord belt on step one of the scale. So like a C major would end on a C chord. A minor would end on an A chord. You can use, usually look at the end and see, and if we look at the end, we got that. Ending on A's, I'm guessing this is an A minor, since we also we just studied minor keys on page 12. So it's in A minor, it doesn't matter. As far as the scales go, do both, the major and the minor. C major, A minor, according to the key signature. And 6 8 time. So an eighth note gets a count. And there's six of them, or the same as six of them in every measure. Okay. Right hand first, let's make sure we know what's going on here. You're starting with thumb on A. It's going to put you here. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Remember, a quarter note's the same as two eighth notes, so it's going to get two counts here. One, two, three, four. Then a little finger up. And that dotted half note, we'll figure it out. It takes up the whole measure, so you know it's the same as six eighth notes. But you can do the math. Dotted quarter notes the same as three eighth notes. So if you take two dotted quarter notes, it's, uh, that's like a dotted half note. Are you confused yet? I just love it. Just remember that a dotted half note is same as six eighth notes or six counts in six eighth time. It's the whole measure. Can I make it more complicated? You betcha. Stick around. I'll get there. Second line. We're here. One, two. Now scratch up a little bit fourth. Thumb comes down. And then third line, you just reach up and come up. Rest. I'm not crazy about that, but we'll go ahead and do that for now. Then the third line down, look at all these E's. They want a five, four, three, two, one. So let's talk about that. We have a lot of repeated E's here, repeated notes. It is quite common to use different fingers on repeated notes. In fact, if we have to change hand positions, we can do it a lot on repeated notes. That's why at the end, you, you, we went from here to here. We did change hand positions. But we have a lot more of these. I could have done them all with fifth finger. But that tends to get tiring and you get tense and we don't want to do that. Now keep in mind that people don't agree on much of anything in music and there's some people who won't do this. They, I'm not using different fingers on these notes. Leave me alone. That's fine, but I encourage it. I think it's a good habit to get into. As far as which fingers you use, well, that's what is what is most convenient. But this is good practice. They're using them all. Five, four, three, two, one. Because a lot of times we'll do this. Four, three, two, one, three, two, blah, 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 this. Just on one note. I'm, just, I'm doing this. Here. Good practice. You should do it in both hands. So you can do it slowly. That's slow to me. Also practice three, two, one, three, two, one. And one, two, one, two, one, two. One, three, one, three. Hey, we're having 
fun now. There's just different fingers. It depends on what the music needs. And this is, I encourage this. You don't really need to practice the, um, play it with this fingering, but it's good practice. And since this is a fast piece, it becomes even more important to use different fingers because you'll tense up if you, if otherwise, and we want to stay relaxed, and this helps it. Here, but you take it at your speed to start. Here, four, three, two, and then four. That's what we want. I recommend, I like that. Last line, now you're up here. One, two, and then an E. And again, you should know that note. It's three ledger lines above the staff. One ledger line is A, two is C, three is E. It's every other note. Just memorize that, it's an E. One, two, now we just got an A minor scale coming down. One, two, three. And then you lift up four. There's other fingerings, but that's fine. We can do that. Left hand. Well, left hand's got the broken chord. We get this A chord broken. And then the D minor chord, the F chord, and then here. Four chord. Second line, G sharp. And then four there. Second line again, that's here, and then four. Because we gotta come down to here. A, B, and do it again. You're just walking your way down. Yeah, whatever. Put the hands together slowly. Now again, when I first put the hands together, I'm just trying to figure out which fingers are working together. I might hesitate all over. I don't care. I just want to know the fingers. So here, they were here, and then here. idea. I go through very slowly and carefully and I put the hands together and then I go back through it a few hundred times or whatever and slowly work out the hesitations. Keep it slow but no hesitations. And once I can do that then I'll think about the articulation or the expression. This is fairly connected. They have these little slurs, the two note slurs. You got repeated notes, you don't have a choice. Just play it. Think, connect the whole line. And that rest is the start of a new phrase, but with the rest, you have to lift up. So just think, connect all of these. And the last line here, pretend all that slurred together, connect it all. And then lift up for the to lift up for the rest. Yeah, it's pretty connected. The left hand, they don't give you anything. Well, you had a choice. The first thing you do, the default, the thing you automatically do is go ahead and connect them if there's nothing. Connect them. You can't always connect it, but do the best you can. And then once you've done that, if you want to experiment with it, you can try different thing. Try disconnecting some or all of it. But then you put it together. If I connect it, if I disconnect the left hand, it's like I'm putting in an eighth rest there. It's a different flavor. You have to experiment, and it's hard to tell going at this speed because we're this is a really fast piece, and we're playing it really slowly. And things change when you go from slow to fast or fast to slow. But this is sort of what we're experimenting with. We're getting the feel for this. And once I have that, then I think about the dynamics with the louds and softs. It's P at the beginning is piano. That's for the melody, which is the right hand. This to be very soft, very light. And the third line down, second major, you have a crescendo. You're going to gradually get louder. To the last line, you have a moderately loud mezzo forte, 
So you're going to go from soft to moderately loud. And you have about two and a half measures or so to get there, three measures. You see in the music, they don't always put the crescendos and things exactly where they go. So in my opinion, it would be at the beginning of the measure. But you're starting that measure soft because the crescendo means get gradually louder. You don't get gradually louder immediately. You gradually do it. So in the third line, I'm soft. I'm still soft. But now I have to plan this out so I get moderately loud by the last line. If I don't plan it out, I'll be moderately loud by the next measure. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go second measure soft. Now I'll go a little, about moderately soft a little bit. Here. Technically speaking, I'm moderately loud on the A. And the reason for that is because of the accent. You see the accent? The accent just takes it up a notch. So you're just playing a little louder. So I'm actually moderately loud there. And the last line I'm staying at moderately loud. So again, second measure, I'm soft. Loud. And then I'm loud. And you're staying moderately loud throughout the rest of it. Moderately heavy, I should say. The harder, the louder I get, the heavier I get is all it is. Stay relaxed if you can. And then the speed. Well, good luck with this. It says presto quickly, but in 6-8 time, that's kind of hard to tell sometimes. Because it may or may not be the speed of the beat. 6, 8 time at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3. Well, if I do that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, that's about a presto. But a lot of times in 6, 8 time, we feel it in 2, and we, we go by that. 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, the natural accents. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The left hand's playing on it. So if I want that to be presto, then this other. be presto it's a bit of a mess in my opinion so I think we got to tone it down a little bit you got to find a balance between the natural accent speed and the speed of the eighth notes so and it's got to be accurate what can you do so you have a natural speed limit for now it'll get faster as you get better with piano don't go faster than your speed limit so everybody will be a little different just play it as quickly whatever you can play accurately my fast for now later on with a few cups of coffee it might change a little bit you don't have to play it that fast you one two three four five say that that's your presto for now close enough just be accurate let's play it together very slowly and just check the notes and the rhythms i'm not going to do louds and softs I'll give us six counts. Just check, are you playing the same note I'm playing at the same time? And even one hand at a time if you need to. One, two, three, four, ready, go. Six. 